Hey CNCers, welcome to the next part of the using the inducto sensors. Today I'm going to walk you through the process of enabling the sensors, explaining what hard and soft limits are, and setting you up using the firmware. I'll go through some common settings as well as show you how to set up multiple workspaces. Finally, I'll show the most common errors you will receive and how to fix them. Before we enable the sensors, confirm you're using the correct machine profile. This is necessary to get the correct machine travel units used and the soft limits will enable later on. Let's start by enabling the sensors. The location area by default has eight control buttons, setting and going to individual axis zero points, zeroing all axes, and moving the machine to your X and Y starting points. To enable homing, open the firmware tool and scroll to homing enabled. Toggle the slider to enable homing and apply new settings. Once you close the firmware tool, you'll notice the location section has been updated with some new buttons. We'll go over them later in the video. When enabled, hard switches will stop the machine when a sensor is triggered and prevents that awful noise. To enable the hard limits, open the firmware tool and scroll down to hard limits enabled. Toggle the settings on and apply new settings. If you receive an alarm 1, you'll be able to coax the machine away from the limit, but next time be mindful of getting close to the machine's limits. To enable the soft limits, open the firmware tool and scroll to the soft limits enable. Toggle the switch and apply new settings. Soft limits use the maximum travel values to keep track of the limits of the machine. To show how this works, I'm going to reduce my travel distance to 300 millimeters, and I'll exit out of the firmware tool. I'm going to change my jog distance to 10 inches or 254 millimeters. When I press the jog button once, it's going to move over that 10 inch distance. When I make a second attempt to jog it over again, we can see that the travel distance has been exceeded and it won't let me move over. Now I'm going to return my settings to the default of 116. And each time I press the jog button, it'll move over the 10 inches until I reach the maximum distance. It's our recommendation to enable both the hard limits and the soft limits when you enable your homing switches. Now that we have our switches set up, let's talk about those new buttons that we have there. The large home button will move the gantry to the sensors and zero the machine coordinates. Look at the small gray numbers for each axis. In a second you'll see that they've changed and that is your machine home coordinates. The corner button with the house will move the router to your machine zero coordinates. The home coordinates can be in any corner. We'll go over that later. Thanks to having the soft limits enabled, you can move your machine to each of the four corners without fear of crashing the router. Note, the machine has a built-in safety feature to not go to the full extent of travel. It's to prevent any part of the machine from crashing if there are accessories attached. The default installation and settings for the sensors are the front left corner. If you'd like to put the sensors in a different location on the machine, the expected direction needs to be changed in the firmware. Simply toggle the appropriate axis for your sensor location. 
Toggle off the X axis if you want the machine to the home to the right front side. Note the Z axis will be toggled off for all of these. Toggle the Y axis off if you want to home the machine to the top left side. Have both the X and Y toggled off if you want to home the machine to the top right. Enabling limit switches allows multiple workspaces on your spoil board. It's a great option if you have multiple setups. The process is very easy. What you want to do is you want to zero out your first piece as normal. You can use the paper method or as in this case here, I'm using the standard touch plate, zeroing out all three axes. Once I've zeroed out the first workpiece, I'm going to move the machine over to my second workpiece. Once I'm in position and I'm ready to zero, the most important step has to happen. I must choose the second workspace first. Once I've selected my second workspace, I can now zero as normal. Here again, I'm using the touch plate, doing an XYZ probe. G Cinder allows up to six different workspaces. Moving between workspaces is as easy as choosing from the drop down menu, then clicking go X, Y, zero. Please always make sure you are using the correct workspace before starting your project. G Center defaults to the first workspace. If you're having issues with the wrong location and you're using the correct workspace, a G54 might be already inside your code. If you're having trouble with the sensors not working, or if you just installed them, the latest version of G-Sender has an easy way to verify your sensors are responding. In the top right corner, click Calibrate. Once the calibration tool is opened, you'll be greeted by the Diagnostics tool. On the right side under Pins, you'll be able to confirm if your sensors are responding. To activate the sensor, place a piece of metal in front. The router wrenches are great for this. When the wrench is placed in front of the sensor, you should see the corresponding limit switches turn on and off. Once tested, you can enable homing, hard, and soft limits, and away you go. If you can get an alarm while you're testing, turn off your hard limits. If you get no response, check your wiring. If you get an alarm 9 when homing, it means the switch wasn't triggered in the expected distance. Make sure the sensors are triggered when jogging the gantries in front of them. If not, adjust the sensor to be activated. Other solutions are to check the wiring for loose connections, tug gently on each wire, and if necessary, decrease the pull-off distance. I'll show how the pull-off distance works in the next step. If you experience an alarm 8, it's caused by the sensors being triggered when the pull-off travel distance failed to clear the switch. Unlock the machine if the alarm is showing. Open the firmware tool and scroll to 27 homing switch pull-off distance. Try increasing the distance the machine moves away from the sensor after the initial trigger.
The pull-off distance is how far the router moves away from the sensor once triggered. Here I'm showing an exaggerated example of its function. Typically, it's not necessary to change unless an alarm 8 repeatedly happens. You can find more information about the limit switches in the links below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great content.